Z790 Phantom Gaming Wi-Fi Riptide. Riptide? What have I got myself into now? <laughs> Intel's 14th gen CPUs have launched, which means you can get 12th and 13th gen CPUs cheaper, am I right? Yeah, well, you know. So you might be looking for an extremely high performance motherboard that you can buy that has all the features, but also doesn't break the bank. Well, okay, that might be the Z790 Riptide. You get a PCIe Gen 5 M.2. It does share the Gen 5 lanes with the graphics card, so your graphics card's gonna run at X8 if you use this slot. But you got four more M.2 that are uh, Gen 4, and one of which is connected directly to the CPU. So you don't have to do that. You can use this, this M.2 here, and you'll get PCIe 4 lanes into the CPU, which is fine. You've got two slots, the full X16 slot, M.2 situation notwithstanding. And then you've got another slot that is physically X16 and is X4 electrical through the chipset. And then you got a PCIe 3.0 by one at the very bottom edge of the motherboard, which is good for, uh, you know, like a 1080p capture card or an add-in sound card if you don't want to use the built-in audio solution. It's basically the standard PCIe layout uh, in 2023. I always like to see more PCIe slots, but more PCIe slots just aren't really a thing anymore. Plus also, what are you going to put in them? I mean, most peripherals are USB these days, and people are going kind of nuts with storage, so... This is a good motherboard if you wanted to run, say, like a RAID 0 game storage drive. You can use the, the inexpensive M.2 that are just flooding the market. You know, 2 terabyte M.2 for 70, 80 bucks, 4 terabyte M.2 for $130. They're not the fastest. They may not be the best, especially for a boot drive, but you can get two of those, run them off of the chipset, and because they're lower performers, they're not going to bottleneck because they're running through the chipset. And then you have a nice high performance M.2, either Gen 5 in the Gen 5 slot, or the other slot connected directly to the CPU. Use that for your boot drive, and then you've got games uh, on a different volume of more than one M.2, and hey, you don't even have to bother with mechanical storage anymore, which is pretty awesome. Although if you do bother with mechanical storage or slower, more inexpensive SATA SSDs, this does have eight SATA ports on it. So if you're thinking, okay, I'll use this system for a few years and then turn it into like a home NAS with six or eight hard drives, maybe it's a platform for that. Let's take a look at the rear I.O. The rear I.O. is not anything super crazy, but it does have some pretty good 10 gigabit connectivity. We've got HDMI and full-size DisplayPort, two USB 2.0, two 5 gigabit, two 10 gigabit, and a 5 gigabit Type-C. We've also got Lightning 5 gigabit Type-A connectors. Now, Lightning is an ASRock thing. They do better uh, power stability and uh, cleaner traces on the PCB. So if you're doing a, uh, a USB audio DAC or you need something to be extra stable, those ports are there. As, as somebody who uses uh, Scarlett uh, Focusrite I2I, 2I2, two, two I2, I2I, two I2, the Focusrite USB stuff benefits from having USB ports that have more stable power delivery because those things are not... Uh, perfectly stable as it is so it, it does surprisingly it does make a little bit of a difference we've also got three analog audio ports our analog audio circuit is driven by the realtek alc 1220 which is pretty standard it's been pretty standard for almost five years now it's a reasonable audio codec it gets the job done it also has a uh, nahemic audio for amplification so if you're running front panel audio with uh, high impedance headphones it's not bad i do like that the heat sink removal On newer ASRock boards is toolless. You just squeeze the button and there's no M.2 screw. It just sort of mounts in there without you having to do anything. That is nice. Ta-da. This motherboard also features embedded DisplayPort. Embedded DisplayPort on the back of the motherboard. Very nice. I like that it's on the back of the motherboard, although you want to install the cable before you do that. ASRock sells some case modding kits that include 1080p LCD displays that you can mount physically inside your case. We've done that before. We've done that for security displays as well as, you know, case mod temperature displays. You enable your iGPU on your processor and it just shows up as another monitor and you can do stuff with it, which is pretty awesome. You can run rain meter or anything else on it. Check out our other videos on that. This motherboard is going to support that. So you can pick up ASRock's case mod kit or an LCD kit or even go off script and order stuff from AliExpress and get some nice embedded DisplayPort displays to connect to that embedded DisplayPort connector. This is actually a standard connector. This is not proprietary. So you could even use this with a, an iPad 4x3 LCD display, as I've done in the very distant past. 
very excited to see this kind of a feature for case modders because it's clean. It just goes with the motherboard and it works really well. This motherboard also has a four pin Thunderbolt header. If you wanted to run a Thunderbolt add-in card in your X4 slot, you could. You've got a 30 pin front panel USB connector, a type C front panel USB connector, and two USB 2.0 headers. So you get a total of four USB 2 ports for internal peripherals, or you could break those out into a PCIe slot or whatever. This motherboard also has seven four pin fan headers, one at the mid board, two at the bottom edge of the motherboard, two at the front edge of the motherboard, and two for the CPU. Those are a mix of 12 and 24 watt power delivery, which isn't bad. We also got three digital RGB headers plus a 50-50 header, but included in the box is an RGB breakout header for the digital header. So you can connect one header here and have three digital headers, three more digital device connections, which is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice uh, value add bundle that ASRock is doing. Also in the box you get a Phantom Gaming case badge as well as a Phantom Gaming keycap. Some SATA cables, just a couple. This motherboard also has an analog temperature sensor input. So you can plug an analog temperature sensor into the motherboard and then read that sensor out in software utilities like Hardware Info 64, which is a pretty nice feature at a motherboard at this price point. Other than that, there's not really anything special to say. Let's start doing some testing. So this motherboard is shaping up to be a pretty great motherboard for the i5 and the i7. You can get it done with the i9. It's a 16 plus one plus one power phase delivery. So if you're gonna run it at six gigahertz, maybe 6.1 gigahertz under a sustained load, you can do it. Connect both of your eight pin power connectors. It's still pretty overkill in terms of power delivery for Intel 14th gen. If you're gonna run 12 or 13th gen in this platform, I don't think you're gonna have a problem if you're doing extreme overclocking. If you're doing a custom loop or something like that, you probably wanna look at a higher end motherboard, but the other part of squeezing as much performance out of uh, Intel LGA 1700 CPUs has to do with memory speed. And this motherboard does support up to DDR5 7600. The fastest memory that I have that I can test in it is DDR5 7200, which I'm pretty delighted to report is plug and play. Where we are right now today with DDR5 in terms of memory density, all these manuals say they support 192 gigabytes of memory. Pretty much any Z690 or Z790 DDR5 motherboard is gonna support 192 gigabytes with a BIOS upgrade because that density is a function of the densities of memory that are available on the market and sort of planning for future capacity upgrades. Theoretically, these motherboards should support 256 gigabytes as soon as we have DDR5 memory modules that have that density of memory. Uh, like you can get ICs that have that density of memory to build your DIMMs out of. That they're, they're sampling now, but they're not in mass production. Or if they are in mass production, they're, they're going to mainly server DIMMs and, and not desktop plebs. But still, 192 gigabytes in four DIMMs, not bad. And I did test with 6400. Uh, in two 48 gig DIMMs, which is a total of 96 gigabytes of memory, and delightfully, plug and play. Good job, ASRock. Of course, ASRock has had a lot of time to get these right, seeing as how they sort of uh, let us see these motherboards at Computex, and they've been in mass production just waiting for Intel 14th gen to get out the door, or 13th gen refresh, if you want to think of it that way. I'm Wendellis Level 1. This has been a quick look at the Z790 Riptide from ASRock, a reasonable upper middle of the road board that is capable of running an i9 competently, but I would recommend for the i5 or the i7, or, you know, last gen, 13th, 12th generation i9, that'll also work fine in this board. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums. If you pick up one of these, yeah, show us your build, show us what you're working on, because that'd be a lot of fun. Just engage with us. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forums.